Yeah, welcome to this demo live from NAB 2014. Uh, I'm Matthias Wolf from Marvel World. I'm here at the booth of Imaginary Systems. And I first want to show you some workflows of the amazing Mocha planar tracking software in combination with After Effects. And then we are also going to take a look at the new workflows of Mocha in combination with Mew. So here's the first example that I want to show you. This is actually a commercial for, uh, for the Opel cars. And you can see there is this blue car in the background that is, I think, a Mercedes. And some of the task here was to modify this uh, front of this Mercedes such that it uh, finally looks like this. Um, so this is what the first example that I want to explain you. And you can see we have some issues here, like this white car coming in front of this Mercedes. And uh, also you have this camera movement. You can see everything is moving here, so definitely we need some tracking, and I hope you will be uh, excited about how easy it really is to use to these kinds of manipulations here, um, right with the help of Mocha and After Effects, and obviously our integration to Mocha Import Plus that simplifies these workflows with Mocha and After Effects. So let's take a look at Mocha Pro. I have opened the shop he shot here already, and now I want to track the front of this car, since this is what I modify, want to modify. To master Mocha, the main thing you really have to understand is that it's a planar tracker, which means like it is able to, play, uh, to track like flat surfaces in your scene. And this part of the car obviously is not really 100% flat, but it's like, if you consider it as a, as a rough geometry, then this part would be like more or less a flat plate, so it's okay to track this in Mocha. Now, we have this other car here coming in front, and obviously when it comes in front, we do not want to track this area here. Therefore, we can use one great feature of Mocha Pro, or of Mocha in general. That is that it can track several planes simultaneously. So you can see, say, this, car of the white, this part of the white car is also more or less a flat surface, so I can track this simultaneously. Now I just click track backwards, and since I have set this cogwheel icon here for both these planes, they are both tracking. Okay, we can see here is this in this region, the track still worked well, and here, somehow, you can see this mask deformed a bit, so it looks like it hasn't enough uh, material to track. So you can easily fix that by retracking. Like, now I can say I like to enlarge this, maybe also take the information from here, and see whether this uh, makes the track better. You can see that now it nicely tra tracks through until here, where we really have no information anymore. Okay, let's also track here in the other direction. Like this, and you can see also how amazingly fast Mocha is actually able to track. So it's like tracking this entire texture and this entire texture, and it's, it's really, really fast as you can see here. Okay, that's it. Don't be irritated, I have here some black frames at the beginning of this project. It's just uh, the video clip, so, so nothing related to Mocha here. Um, now we want to mod modify this front of the car, and we do it by first setting the surface rectangle. This is this blue rectangle here that you can turn on and off at this point. And if you do a basic corner pin, this is like the region where your image goes that you corner pin. Uh, but in this situation, we do not want to do a corner pin. What we want to do in After Effects is what I call a stabilized pre-con. And in the scenario of a stabilized pre-con, you can imagine this blue surface as like the area of interest that you actually want to modify. And you can see here this blue uh, rectangle now nicely moves with our track, and you can export this data. So one problem when you export tracking data here from Mocha to After Effects is that if you take a look, well, you know you need After Effects data, but there are like four different After Effects formats, so which is the correct one to choose. The nice thing is that Mocha Import Plus, our amazing tool to use uh, Mocha data in After Effects, helps you with this, answers it for you. Uh, let me start Mocha Import Plus here. Mocha Import Plus has different functions that it supports. You can do basic corner planning, you can move, this is like creating a null object based on the track, you can also create After Effects track points, or you can, and this is what most of our clients actually use 90% of the time, you can create this stabilized pre -con. And this is what we are going to use here too. Now, depending on which function you need, you can see these uh, red and green dots change. So if you want to move something, 
you need After Effects transform data and not corner pin. If you want to create a stabilized preform, which is what we want, corner pin, corner pin only data works, or the transform data, but not the corner pin that supports motion blur. So here you have your answer, what tracking data you need. We are going for the corner pin only, because when you have the choice between corner pin and transform, usually the corner pin is more accurate. So let's go to Mocha Pro and choose this corresponding format, corner pin only, and save it. I'm not going to save it here because I have already a preformed version of this file exported, so I can just click here on load. And um, actually, be, uh, before I load this, let me prepare a composition. So we go to our footage. This one here, drag it into the composition because we really want to start from scratch. Here's our clip. And now we go to Mocha Import Plus, load our tracking data. And when we have it, just a second. Documents. NAB. Mocha AE Opel Luca. This is our tracking data that we exported from Mocha. And now Mocha Import asks us which clip did you track? Yeah, obviously here I have not a big choice. This is the only clip I have in my timeline. Um, this question is actually pretty important because it's like when you get tracking data from Mocha to After Effects, there are many things that can go wrong. So for example, you have an image sequence and in Mocha you said this has 24 frames per second and then in After Effects you said it has 25 frames per second, then all your tracking data will go wrong. But by asking this question, Mocha import is able to check all these details, also like where in your timeline exactly starts the clip, etc., etc., and will make sure the tracking data is applied in the right way. Now I'm going to um, rename this layer to background, duplicate it, and call the duplicate blue car. And to this blue car layer, I apply this tracking data as stabilized precon. And now it asks me which corner pin effect do you want to use. You can use the standard corner pin effect, CC power pin, that is included in After Effects. Or you can also, if you have it installed, use the Red Giant Wall plugin, which has the advantage that it has also motion blur support. But apart from that, you can use both plugins, uh, or like the built in version of this plugin, whatever you like. Now, what happened? If you look, it looks like nothing has changed, but your blue car layer turned into a pre -com. And if I hide the background for a moment, you can see that this pre-comp only consists of this region that we checked. So, and it nicely follows our track. So it's like the, the region you're seeing here is what we set in Mocha as this blue surface rectangle here. Um, now the great thing about this approach is that you can now simply enter this pre -comp, and what you see inside the pre -comp, is that our car is now perfectly stabilized and we can start modifying it in this view here. So this means I can rename, for example, this layer again to background and duplicate it or duplicate patch. And I want to just copy like this part here of the car and move it up a bit. So I just draw a mask around it like this and move it up. And this is like almost like working on a still frame, right? But you're really working here on, on the moving image. And this has uh, some uh, pretty nice advantages. So, for example, if your footage has any kind of noise or grain, or let's say the lighting changes over time, all of this you get automatically for free here because you're not working on a still image, so it's way more flexible than, flexible than doing a basic corner pin. Also, you can have here, maybe let's add a bit of mask feather to blend this a little bit, a little bit better, like this. And then let's say we also want to add here some kind of blue, so it's easy to add blue layers. I just want to have a solid here, like this. And let me deactivate this for a moment. And draw a mask around the little bit of the cover. Obviously, I'm doing this pretty quick here, but uh, you get the idea that you can have a lot of freedom how you can how you can can actually modify your scene. Yeah. So, in a very rough way, we now have modified in this static perspective here uh, the front of our car. So, this is what it looked like before, and this is what it's looking like now. And maybe let me move some blue behind our patch like this. Um, and the great thing is, all of this is automatically brought back to, to this perspective here, to our original perspective that we actually tracked. 
And if I make the background visible again, you can see it perfectly fits in. So it's like work, it's almost like working with a static uh, image, like working in Photoshop, and all the movement is later automatically reapplied. Now we have some issue with this car here in the foreground. What we definitely need here is some kind of rotoscoping. So I duplicate my background for the foreground and drop it on top of our modification here on our stabilized precom. Now instead of masking this now in After Effects, I can reuse the mask I've used in Mocha because when we track this here, remember we also track this region here in order to handle the situation when the two start overlapping here. So this means we already get for free this match that we need and now we can bring this from uh, Mocha to After Effects by just, uh, sorry, by just selecting the correct mask first, I want to this mask, export shape data, and copy it to clipboard as Mocha shape data for After Effects. In After Effects, I have two ways to apply this data, actually. I can say edit paste, or I can say edit paste Mocha mask. And these are two different things, and I'm going to show you both of these now, so that you understand the difference. If you just First, when you paste the tracking data, you need to go to the first frame and say, edit, paste. And now if you take a look at what we're having here, we have this mask, and it nicely moves with our track here. And so if you take a look at the final result, now our issues are also gone. So the car is now nicely in front of our modifications. But what we have here is not a true After Effects mask. If you take a look at this, this is not looking like a normal After Effects mask. This is actually an effect that is rendering this mask uh, as a mat. So now, reason, or the question is, why do we have here this effect and not a normal After Effects mask? Well, the point is, let me delete this again. Um, if you go back to Mocha Pro, Mocha has a pretty advanced system to do uh, variable uh, with edge feathering. So you can take this point, drag it out like this, drag this point a little, and here not at all. You can get all this data, so I export the tracking data, sorry, the shape data, and copy it to the clipboard. And if I go to After Effects and paste this again, edit, paste, and solo this layer for one, you can see all this feathering is preserved with this effect. Now obviously it would be nicer to have all of this in a normal After Effects mask, but if you uh, think of After Effects, before CS6 it has no variable feathering at all, and since CS6 it has a feathering, that variable feathering. But this is very different in nature from the one you have in Mocha, because in After Effects you can have masks with like 20 vertices and just one or two feather points, and in Mocha you have like for each vertex you have one feather point, and they are, tight, they are like, this is one-to-one -one correspondence. So in short, there is no way technically to convert one format into the other. So the best thing you can do if you need the feathering is to say, I render this in an effect. Now, if you say, I don't care about the feather I have in Mocha, I want to do my feathering after effect. This is the way I like to work. Then you can delete this here and say instead, I say, edit, uh, paste Mocha mask. And what this will give you is actually a mask that is a true After Effects mask as you're used to it, like this. And now you're free to do your feathering here right inside of After Effects. So these are the two choices you have for the masks here. Um, I want to show you another example, a second example for essentially the same workflow. And I think this example is even more impressive. So let me just open this uh, project. This is a Jeep commercial, actually. It's also, as this one, also done by Slaughterhouse, which is a great uh, company doing um, real effects and compositing and all this stuff in, in Germany, in Berlin and Hamburg. Um, and the project is looking like this. So you can see we have here this nice Jeep. And the task is actually to remove this, this, these patterns here in the sand because obviously it should look like the car is going here the first time. And again, if you take a look at it, the sand is moving and uh, the car is going in front of this, so it's not like a super easy process. But if you remember with this previous example, I've shown you how to do this from start to finish in like a few minutes. And this will be the same here. So it's obviously, it's really surprisingly simple to do all of this uh, in Mocha. So this is like, let me show you like the final result. Uh, so we are, we are going to, to do this replacement here. 
And how is this going to work? Let's first track this short in Mocha. Uh, let's, let's actually create a new project for this file. Here we go. I overwrite the existing project, and here we have our footage. Now, what we want to track is the sand that we want to replace. But if we take a look at the clip, I don't want to track the region here because the car is going to cover it. So, since, since all of this is essentially one plane, I can also track this region here, although it's not uh, like the region that we actually want to modify. So, let me just choose this region here and say track forwards. You can see again that the track is going uh, pretty fast. It's also pretty robust, even when, starts, when the pattern here starts leaving our frame. So the important thing to understand when tracking with Mocha is that it's tracking like flat textures. It's not, not looking at individual features, feature points. So also if you have like motion blur or something, it won't throw off. You can also, uh, or it won't be irritated. And um, also you see here, most of my texture has left the frame, but there's still enough information in it to get a pretty solid track here. Um, now I need to say, set the surface, like so the region that I want to modify. So this is like this, this rectangle here. I obviously want to set it around the region that we, uh, that we want to detach. One nice uh, thing you can do here is clicking this button, which makes uh, the surface full frame at the frame where you, are, where you currently are. You can see now it moves with our track here. And now you can export this tracking data. I did this before, so I skip this step here. And go to After Effects, take our footage, and drag it into the new composition. Here we go. Um, then we go to Then we go to Mocha Import Plus. And let me, before we load the tracking data, rename this here to background and duplicate it and call this one here send. And then I load my tracking data on the Jeep corner panel. And now again, Mocha asked me which clip did I track. And again, this is because Mocha import is checking all the consistency for like, do I have the correct frame rate? Where does my clip start in the timeline to really be able to apply it uh, correctly later here? I say OK and say, please create such a stabilized pre-comp for me. Apply it. I choose the corner pin effect that I want to use. You can use any of those actually. And now I finished processing. And if you take a look at this, Sand layer, it turned into a pre-comp now, and it is nicely moving with our track. Now, as I said, my Orca is a planar tracker. It is able to uh, uh, track flat surfaces. Now, the sand here does not really look like 100% accurate flat sink, but let's take a look at the, at the pre-comp to see how good our track is. If we enter this pre-comp, it looks like this. You can see the sand is really... Uh, really good stabilized, and it's now really easy to, to replace this sand, actually. So this is how, how robust uh, you are able to track in Mocha. And another great thing about these stabilized pre-comps is that it's like the most easy and most accurate way to check how good your tracks are. Because it's like, if there is nothing moving anymore in your pre-comp, you know your track is 100%. If there is still something moving, you can say, okay, let's keyframe a bit in the pre-comp when you do your modification to compensate for that. It's like you only see the tracking error left, so it's easy to fine-tune this. Um, or what some people also even do is they say, okay, let's export this here, render this in a new movie clip, and open this as a, in a second round in Mocha, track this again to get this last tracking error out. Obviously, if you have, uh, if you have curved surfaces like tracking a forehead or something, you can do great modifications, and I'm going to show you an example about this, but then you cannot expect it to be 100% static as you can see it here. So more like a flat surface it is, the better the uh, Mocha will be able to track it and the more stabilized it will be. Now let's bring in a plate that I have prepared here in Photoshop. So you, it's like exporting a single frame, bring it into Photoshop and bring it in here, like this. I make it invisible for a moment to draw a mask. 
this. Actually, at this end, I want to have a little bit of feathering. And to understand why, let me first make the mistake of doing no feathering. The general looks great, but if we go back to our main perspective here, you can see here where our pre-com uh, starts. You see kind of kind of an edge. I think here here it's getting even more visible. This is like where where our pre-com starts. You see the transition. So therefore, I like to have here uh, a feathered edge. So it's a good point to show the After Effects edge feathering system, and you can see it's different. I can move my feather points freely around, and I can also say something like I just have two feather points here. So like this. Now you can see here's no no edge anymore. Everything is nicely blended, and we are like almost done, except for this car in the foreground. We could now do it exactly as with the other uh, clip before to say let's rotoscope this in in Mocha. The problem is here you have like shadows and then this sand flying around, so it's not something you want to do with, with a mask alone. So I would go here for some kind of color key. And this is also a great thing about the stabilized pre-comps is that whatever technique you know and you can use it in any composition, you can use it in the stabilized view. It's not like you call a pin an image and then you say, oh, let's add some mask. Oh, do I have to apply the mask before the corner pin effect or after it? And what if I do anything else? How to add another solid? Do I need to duplicate my corner pin effect? Whatever. Just work in a composition as you're used to. Really easy. And what I want to do is I duplicate my background layer here, move it up, and call it uh, matte. Because what I want to try is to do some kind of luma key. So I just add a curves effect pretty quickly, drag it on top of my matte. And bring it here. Uh, and now I want to try to make like the car entirely black and the sand entirely white. Now the main goal here is first to get the sand white, but preserve as much as possible from the shadows. Uh, and now let's make the car black. Obviously, you could fine tune this, as I don't want to spend too much time on the example. I think it should be good like this. So I just set the track mat to alpha mat, and you can see now the car is uh, oh sorry, not alpha mat, luma mat, of course. And now you can see the car is in front uh, of our uh, of our sand. Obviously, this gives you nice details in the shadows here and the sand, uh, but it, it's not yet perfect. We need also some kind of garbage mat. This garbage mat is again something you can perfectly do in uh, Mocha. I don't want to go do it here, uh, so I just load a finished project. Uh, this one. So this is like this, exactly the same thing we did before, except that I did here some mat in uh, in Mocha, and you can see I heavily used here this variable edge feathering. Um, another thing that I want to quickly mention is you can see I have three layers here. I've tracked the sand, then I've tracked the car. Then I have the roto of the car. The point is, often you don't want to, if you mask this region here, you don't really want to also track this region. You maybe just want to track the license plate, because this is like the main movement and not tracking the sand here that's irritated. This is very easy in Mocha. You first track your layer, then you add a new layer, and in this new layer, you say link to track, and I will say I link to the track of this other layer. It's like you can have 20 layers following the track of one which makes the rotoscoping a bit more convenient. Okay, I export my tracking data, sorry, the shape data, of course, copy it to the clipboard as Mocha shape data for After Effects. And by the way, these workflows, the stabilized pre and also exporting the masks, are available in, uh, in Mocha for After Effects. No need to upgrade to the Pro version if you have um, After Effects for this. The Pro version has other great features like lens distortion, uh, and, and the totally amazing remove module, but for the stabilized pre workflows, all you need is After Effects and the Mocha Import Plus uh, plugin or uh, script actually that you can get from, from my company available on AE scripts. Okay, I select the foreground, um, in, or I actually create a foreground, so I duplicate my background layer, foreground, and go to the first frame, say edit. Edit face mocha mask, and you can see we have our car here now nicely in front of the sand. Obviously, this, this could deserve a little bit more love and some details like 
uh, playing a bit with Luma key to get the shadows here better. But you can see that really in a very few minutes you can get a basic version already of um, uh, this is obviously not good to use in the mocker mask, I just noticed. But see here, I don't get the variable with edge feather. I don't want, obviously, to paste this as a normal mask. I delete it again and say edit paste, of course, because I now definitely want to have the edge feathering. And now you can see you have nice detail here everywhere. And yeah, all of this can, can really be done pretty quickly. So let's take a look at the final result again last time. Okay, now the rendering is finished and you can see you have here nice detail everywhere. The car is going on top of the sand and yeah, nice application of the After Effects uh, Mocha Import Plus and the Stabilized Precomp of it in combination with Mocha Pro. Uh, now I also have to prepare for you some new examples, what you can do with uh, Mocha and Mocha Import Plus for new. Mocha Import Plus for Nuke and for After Effects are not directly comparable. It's like there are features that are only available in After Effects, and there are features like this track and Mocha is currently only available in the After Effects version, and other great features that are only available in the Nuke version. So let's take a look at what you can do in Nuke. Here we go. You can see that in this clip, we have tracked several different planes. And this is, like, I think, a, a great example to explain what Mocha is able to handle. Yeah, it's like flat planes that you're tracking uh, in the 3D space, this is perfectly what you want. And what you get is like this 2D planar data. Um, you can see I tracked here this ground as one layer, this ramp here on the left as one layer, the ramp on the right as one layer, and the roof. The roof consists of two masks. Yeah? It's like each layer can have more than one mask, and they are now tracked as, as, as one track, like two parts one to the same track. When you think about this, it's like the point to always ensure that if each layer each layer really um, corresponds to one flat surface in your scene. So therefore it's like this is one perfectly flat surface, so you can track it as one. You might also be tempted to think that this here is together with can be tracked together with this one, because it looks like somewhat like the same plane. But if you look closely, you can see here this part of this road is actually much longer than this one. This means in 3D space they are not like absolutely uh, in one plane, but they are like offset in 3D space. This means if the camera is moving, you get you start getting some parallax. So therefore, tracking this and this at the same time is not working. So why I'm explaining this detail is that Mocha tracks super robust and re really great. And if you don't get a good track, sometimes make sure what you're tracking is really one plane, or whether you need to split it up in several planes. And if this is not the reason, other things that can easily go wrong is that often it makes sense to activate here shear and perspective to also track this. We are coming to the details of this in a minute, and to play around with this minimum percentage pixel series. So these are really the, like the key things you need to learn uh, to, to get solid tracks. So we have some nice tracks here. Now, what in what ways do I get these uh, into new? Uh, if you look at the export tracking data, we have here for Nuke the Nuke ASCII, which I rarely use, and the Nuke corner pin, which you all the time need for Mocha Import Plus for Nuke. If you just copy it to the clipboard and go to Nuke, here we have our footage, and you just say edit uh, paste, what you get is a normal uh, corner pin node. Right? And the four corners of this corner pin correspond to the surface of this layer, this is the surface. In this case, I've set it here pretty wide, like this. Uh, and these four corners you now get as a corner pin. Now, often you actually don't want to use a new corner pin. Many people are, for example, used uh, to use tracker nodes. And this is normally pretty complicated to get this corner pin data converted into a tracker node. But with Mocha Import Plus, here you have it uh, in your loop. Um, it's really easy to create, to import Mocha tracking data into uh, tracker nodes. This, we have several nodes here, several which are called plus nodes, like tracker plus, which is a normal tracker node, just with the ability to load Mocha tracking data, extended. And you have the same also for rotopane, for grid mode, for transform, so just normal new nodes, which is now super easy to import tracking data. We also have other, so like the stabilized view, which is a new node, or two nodes actually, an entire rig which corresponds to the stabilized pre-comps that I've shown you in After Effects, which is uh, Jigsand and this uh, open example. 
and we have a corner pen that supports lens distortion, but I'm coming to this uh, later. So let's first take a look at this very basic stuff, how to import tracking data into a tracker node. So I click on it, I have in my tracker node, and then I just have here a normal tracker with four track points, go to Mocha Import Plus and say from clipboard. Now the data with a single click is imported. You can see here our track points, we go to trackers in here, uh, our track points um, nicely follow these four corners of our track. Now, once you have a tracker, many people uh, like to work it because it's so flexible, you can do so many things with it. Like you can say, I want to have a transform node based on that create, and now we have a transform node linked to it. And if you take a look, we have here our transform, and this transform nicely follows our track. Now, I think this is not a good idea at all. Don't do this, don't work with tracker nodes to create transform nodes, because Usually this is not accurate. Why, why am I telling you this? Let's take a look at an example. Uh, I have prepared here some, some notes. Here. Uh, if you take a look at this example, you can see we have two grids. The grid on the left is moved with a corner pin and the grid on the right is moved with a transform node. And the problem here is that transform nodes only have position, scale and rotation data. So with the node, uh, you can see we have here a tracker node, and here we have the transform that is actually moving the grid. And if you take a look at the transform, it has keyframes on translation, rotation, and scale. What's the problem with this? Well, if you go to more control, it can track translation, scale, rotation, but also shear and perspective. And so the question is, what is shear and perspective? And uh, what happens with it when I just link translation scale application? Well, the simple answer of what happens with it is that it's lost. Uh, if you just use translation scale application, shear and perspective are thrown away, and your track gets inaccurate. And so, what is shear and perspective? I mean, Mocha is a planar tracker, which means the result of it is a 2D result, so it's like a plane moving in, in 2D. But what it's actually tracking is like a 3D plane. Yeah? So, this thing here you can see is a plane that is not totally flat in 2D space, but it's like a third. And so this is a 3D plane that is tracked. The problem is in 2D you cannot fully 100% accurately represent the movement of such a 3D plane only with position, scale and rotation. And therefore what Mocha does with shear and perspective, it's like, this is like representing the 3D part of your movement as a 2D deformation. You know what you can do with polar pin, like arbitrarily stretching your image to make it look as if it would be 3D, this is what you get with shear and perspective. And this is exactly what you throw away if you use a few of these workflows that involve tracker nodes and transform nodes linked to them. And you can also see this as a result. I mean, this here looks like the right grid looks perfectly uh, 2D flat, and this one looks like correctly in a 3D perspective. And this makes a tremendous difference if you, for example, want to do some kind of a rotoscoping. So I have here a rotoscoping node. This is rotoscoping here, this red line. And I've linked it to this tracker the same way as I did it with the transform. So you can see we have here our layer and the transform has translation, scale, and rotation only. And what does this mean? If you take a look at it, it perfectly follows our grid. So it always nicely uh, sticks to this grid. But it's not, it doesn't fit to the background, so to this ramp here that you actually want to track. And so the error you get here is exactly like the missing shear and perspective that you've thrown away. So it's like, um, if you want to do some rotoscoping here, it really makes sense to also use shear perspective to be accurate. And if you compare this to this node that I've prepared here, this is a rotor node that is uh, working with. Um, Shear perspective because I've played this with it with Mocha Import Plus. You can see it perfectly sticks to the ground. This is really the, the difference of using shear perspective or not doing it. If you take a look at the two grids, at first it looks like okay, both of them nicely uh, follow our cam camera movement. And again, it's also not a problem of like this track here uh, being worse than this one. It's just like a different way to get the data in. And here you definitely be, uh, are a lot more accurate. How complex is it to use shear perspective data? With Mocha Import Plus, it's super easy. All you really need to do is to say, I want to do rotoscoping, so I create a rotopaint node or a rotor node. I 
go for the water paint. Yeah, choose the water paint plus this is the one that has with Mocha import. Uh, and let me just zoom it here to our footage. Like this. And if we take a look at our footage, now we can start rotoscoping. So let me add some mask here. Maybe around this region. Pretty quickly. And now you can see currently we have not applied any tracking data, therefore the mask stays where it is and doesn't move uh, with the track. Now we can what we can do is we can go to Mocha Pro, select this track that we want to work with, export the tracking data, copy it to the clipboard as a corner pin format, and go to new and to the Mocha Import Plus tab of this uh, logo pane. Then I can choose the layer to which I want to apply the tracking data. So you can say I only want to move this mask and all other masks or other layers should not move. Or you say I apply it to the root in this case, which means all other layers that you will create later move according to this tracking data too. And this is pretty powerful, I think. So you just say apply it to the root, copy to clipboard, and you can see now uh, our mask is automatically uh, following our track. Now, um, Another remark remarkable thing about this is that you can continue working at any frame you like. So it's not like go to frame one to paste your tracking data or something like this. It's always working the way you, ex you, you might expect it or hope. So, for example, I can also add now here some clone brush strokes to this layer. I want to paint on all frames and maybe also the size here, this is 50. And so now let's say I want to remove this. Actually, we don't see anything because obviously we need to take a look at our roto mode and connect it to the background. Here we go. Now we can start painting. Painting is out. Let's use this for reference. And it's automatically everything is following our track. Now I can go to another frame like here. So I also want to paint out this. And maybe I also want to. I think I want to, to, to double it. To this and complicate this part here. So all of this is easily possible, and you can freely move around in time. And obviously here now I have a little problem because I have like copied from a part from the frame that are now already black. You can avoid this by actually painting on frames that are on top like this. Yeah. So it's easy, really easy to do any kind of clean up here in, our, in this setting. Um, what I've shown you for After Effects are these amazing uh, stabilized uh, views or stabilized pre-comps. In After Effects I call them stabilized pre-comps because it's exactly what they are, pre-comps. Now in you, the word pre-comp has a very different meaning, so therefore we call them here stabilized view. How is this looking like? Well, it's also again really easy, one-click operation. You just say Mocha Import Plus, please create a stabilized view for me, and what you get is this here. Uh, so an entire rig with uh, two nodes and a background. Let me make some more spacing. And let me take the input of this and connect it to our footage. And to clean it up, I want to uh, make it like this. So here, our footage goes into this first node, and this node creates our stabilized view. For the stabilized view, we need our corner pin data. So I go to Mocha Pro, and it's like this is the region that we want to work with. You can see here it nicely follows our track. Export tracking data, copy to clipboard. We go to new, and in the start stabilized, I say from clipboard. And now, if we take a look at this node here inside the stabilized view, it is actually looking like this. So, what you get is a view on the area that you want to modify where the part you track is perfectly static, not moving at all, and every single around it is slightly deformed. So it's like the same concept in After Effects, but where you have an After Effects view composition, you have here this stabilized view. Then at the end, you have here this end stabilized node, and if we take a look at this one, so that is inside here, you do your modifications, and then here you have your end stabilized. Then if you take a look at this, this is taking the area that you modify and bringing it back to the original perspective. So now we can take our background, let's move this obviously away, and merge it, I do M for merge, and add a merge node here, and merge it into this background. Now you can see it perfectly fits to this. It's like here we have our stabilized new result, and here our 
converge and perfect it is exactly the same concept as we have with the after effects. Now this means we can do modifications in the stabilized loops. So for example, again, we can do some log stem uh, or brush strokes. So let me do this just to quickly show it. So I want to do some roto paint. Now we don't need the roto paint plus from our input because inside of here there's no need to apply any tracking data. So we're going to do the normal roto paint. Obviously, you can also use a plus version if you like. But um, so I take some clone step in here. Um, again, make the size a bit larger and paint the more frames. And now again, I can start painting. So it really depends on uh, on what you prefer, whether you want to paint directly on the moving footage or in the stabilized view. Um, but here, of course, you can do much more than painting. You can insert additional layers to any kinds of advanced uh, things you like. Whatever overlaying anything, uh, pretty complex stuff. Now made really easy. And but I think one point in view is that people are really concerned about quality. Now it's like you don't want to lose any single bit of quality in view. And uh, this is like something that is like a bit problematic with stabilized views in general. Because if you think about how each of these pixels are processed, it's like each pixel you can see here is processed the first time. To get this uh, stabilized view result here, and then at the end it's processed a second time to like get uh, um, to get back to to this perspective here. It's like one time processing to get the movement out, and then one, another time processing to get the movement in again. And if you want to avoid this, you have the option in the stabilized views of new. Um, we have at the end stabilized node here this amazing checkbox only render modified pixels and the name is exactly also what it does. So if I click here and now also enable the pre-multiply alpha, you can see only these regions that you only modified are, uh, are rendered now in your scene and it's really easy now to, to uh, for all these other pixels that we normally had here, see um, this is, uh, they are not uh, rendered anymore, and then they are only rendered here by the merge node at the very end. So this even has some softness parameter. So here you can say so you can increase this or decrease it to um, to better blend this uh, with, with your original footage. Okay, this is the stabilized view. And another amazing thing, thing that I want to show you is the grid warp. This is great for any kind of beauty work. So let me just open another project for this. Um, with Facebook, here we go. Here you can see we have the space, and this is one of these examples where we don't have a really flat surface, so we cannot really expect to get a 100% accurate result. But it's really impressive how still uh, impressive results you can create here with Mocha, also on these non flat surfaces. What you want to do is the result uh, like this. So we want to modify the ear of this guy, uh, warp it a bit with our grid warp. And you can see, first this uh, renders uh, quickly, and you can also see even when the head is turning, uh, everything is nice and accurate here. So how is this working? Let's open this clip in the code. You will be amazed how super fast you can track it. I create a new project, so we save the old one, choose our clip. So, Red Wolf, here we go, this is our footage. Take on OK, create a new project, and now we want to check this here. So, I just draw a very rough mask around the region that we want to check. Maybe like this, and say track forwards. Now you can see the track automatically follows this ear, and even when the ear is turning, no problem since Walker is tracking the entire texture, it's really easy to get this track here. I export the tracking data as new product in, as always, for any kind of new work and use this more info plus. Copy it to the clipboard and go to new. Go to this new page. Okay. Inside of you, let me just restart with this footage. So we connect everything here and say what I put plus is create a grid mode. And here we go. We can take a look over the footage and go to the frame that we like. We'll feel well, here I want to modify the ear. I like this frame here, for example. 
I zoom in a bit and add a few more lines to our grid to have a bit more control. Okay, like this. Okay. And now I can start deforming it. So I zoom this up a bit. This is here to the left. Now, uh, whatever kind of modification you want. Maybe like this. Okay, here we go with our fancy ear. And so far, we haven't applied any tracking data yet. So, this is like when your line is moving, um, when the phrase is turning, this is not exactly uh, what, what you want to have. So, you just go to the frame where you think here it's looking good. Say, please take my tracking data from the clipboard. And now, as by magic, all of this is automatically applied. It's distorting. Like, uh, and, and you can see also how amazingly fast this is rendering. Yeah, it's like, uh, since all of this is just 2D deformation and no fancy 3D camera soft projection, blah, 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 whatever going on, everything is not just super easy to track and robust, it's also super fast. Okay, as I mentioned, the camera things, uh, so sometimes you really need a camera track, and there also Mocha Pro can help you. Mocha Pro has a basic camera solver in it. And let me just very quickly show you what this is working like. Uh, camera solver example. Okay, here we go. Uh, in this uh, clip, I have tracked three different planes. This plane, this plane, and this plane. Uh, why did I track several of them? Well, for camera solving, you normally need more than one plane. And to get a better intuition about this, it's important to understand how camera trackers are working. So normal camera trackers are tra first tracking a point cloud, and then from looking at this point cloud, they guess how the camera is moving. Now, point, point clouds have one problem, and this is once you have some very blurry frames for some motion blur or any other reason, you don't find the features anymore that you need to create your point cloud or to track your point cloud, and then it's hard to get a good camera track. Okay, it's much better. In uh, situations where you have uh, like motion blur because it's not tracking individual points but it's tracking entire textures and it's like with humans if you have a blurry image you can still like recognize a texture so it's still possible to track it and this is the same for for mocha so since it's looking at textures it is able to track also if you have motion blur and now the point is if you know how this texture is moving, you know for each single point in this texture how it's moving. So it's like you can create a point cloud from it, including all the points of this texture. But if you just look at one plane, you don't get any parallax information. So usually if you have a point cloud, you want to have points that are not all located in one plane. So what are you doing? You are tracking several planes. And then you have again a point cloud that is good enough to uh, do some kind of camera solve. Obviously, the point clouds you get by that are a bit unusual because you have like many points lying in the same plane, but only very few planes. So, in short, if you want to do something successful, it's a good idea. If you want to use the Mocha camera solver well, successful, it's good to um, track regions nearby the position or nearby the places where you actually want to insert something in your scene or want to do something because nearby the track scenes are really uh, most accurate. Uh, now, okay, how is this camera track working? I just select all the layers that should be involved in the camera track, go to camera solve, and say solve. Now, Mocha Pro is calculating the camera solve, and here you have a solve quality of 97%, for example. Then you export the camera data and choose a new FBX uh, format, this one here, and save it as a file. I'm not going to do this as I've done this before. And now the question is, how do you use this data in uh, uh, Nuke, actually? So, in Nuke, let me just open another project that shows this. So, for the camera solver, we have, like, um, what you usually want to have is so your camera and also some point cloud, and you get both of this from the FBX. You can see around each uh, plane that we uh, tracked, we have some uh, some points. So these points in the background, these around the pole, and these around the sign here. Uh, and so here's your point cloud, and here's your camera. And then you need to combine these in, you know, like into a scene. Then we have your scene and a scanline renderer, and then you have your axis node that allows you to orient your point clouds in space. This is like uh, 
defining your ground plane, stuff like this. And this is a, a, a rig that actually um, the uh, Broker product manager, Martin Brennant, um, shows in one of his uh, tutorials. And he shows step by step how to build this rig. And it's like, I think, a half an hour tutorial. So it just takes half an hour to do all of this. Um, but with Mocha Import Plus, it's even faster because what you can do now is to just say, Mocha Import Plus, please create me this for the camera rig. You just need to choose the FBX file. Here we go, this is the FBX file with the camera data that I exported. Open, and bam, this entire rig is created for you in a single click. So in other words, just take a look at the tutorial from Martin Brennard about using the Mopa camera solver in view to understand how this uh, camera solver is working. Um, and then don't, uh, don't go through all the hassle of constructing it manually, but do it as we have here in a single click. Okay, the last topic that I want to quickly touch on this uh, demo, it has to do with lens distortion. And for this, let me also quickly open up another project. The product we have here is actually a simple uh, corner pin. And if you take a look at it, at this corner pin, um, it is nicely uh, following our track. So we have this uh, image inserted in the screen here. But if you look closely, we have some issue here at the top. You can see some of the green background. This is, what, uh, this is what the background is looking like, and now we have our insert. It's looking almost perfect, but here it's not accurate. And although here in the corner we are accurate, and here in the corner we are accurate, here in the middle we are not. And this is because the thing we inserted has a perfectly straight line, but our clip, in our clip, this uh, line is not perfectly straight. And this is because of Lens distortion. And what we therefore have in Mocha Import Plus is a new node, this Mocha Import Plus corner pin with lens distortion. And if we do the same thing with this node, you can see it's looking like this. So if you compare the normal corner pin with the lens distortion corner pin, you can see quite a bit of a difference. So how, how is this actually, how is this working? Obviously, first in Mocha, we need now to do two tasks, we need to track this footage. And we also need to determine the lens distortion. And Mocha Pro is able to do both of this. So let me just create a new project for this clip. Do Mocha New. Where is it? Lens distortion. Here we have our clip. And now I want to track it. Yes. Um, so, by the way, this is an example where you might think, wow, this is pretty tough to track because there's like no features at all, and no points, everything black, and then this green thing here, no tracking markers, no nothing. If you do stuff like tracking uh, phones or something like this, uh, mobile phones, uh, you don't need any tracking markers if you want to do it with Mocha. So better don't use the tracking markers because then you have like nice reflections in your surfaces that you can reuse. What you do instead? is to say, I just want to track this edge around it and not this entire surface. And you do this by adding a second mask here like this. So this means what we are now just tracking is, um, oh, I did it uh, wrong actually. Actually, I put this here on two layers. This is one layer, this here is the other. Uh, obviously what I want to do instead is to use this layer. We need to select it. And in this layer, I don't want to use this tool, I want this tool to actually add a second mask. Like this. And now you can see we're only tracking this outside region and not this entire green here, uh, which speeds the entire thing up. And just in case we have some reflections on top of here, this is not an issue with this particular clip, but with others, then these reflections are not really tracked. Uh, so now, before we start tracking, I always like to add my corner pin surface here because this is a perfect way to check whether our track is accurate. Now, if the blue surface rectangle perfectly sticks to the edge here, then our track is good. But you can see already while I'm doing this, if you look closely, we have uh, some, some issues here. And this is, let me put this here really accurately in the corners. And now if we closely look at 
to talk here. You can see there are some green pixels on top of our blue line. This is our lens distortion. Uh, so before we track, we want to like get rid of this lens distortion or understand what lens distortion we have in the clip. So we go to the lens tab. The lens tab is working as follows. You just click on the locate lines, and now it Orca shows you everything where it says this looks almost like a straight line. And then you say new line, and with this new line, you click on everything where you say this belongs to one straight line. This should actually be one straight line, although due to our lens distortion it's not. Say again, new line, and you see here, new line, here, here, and another new line here. And now we'll say what kind of distortion do we have? A one parameter distortion model is like the basic barrel distortion, which is works in this case. And I click calibrate, and now our lens is solved. If you have uh, the freedom to shoot with your camera and don't get like a, um, a clip that somebody else shoot, you can or make sure you shoot a grid with this lens, and then it's very easy to, to calibrate. But often you don't have these grids because you're not the one who's shooting and the others forgot about it. Then as long as you have some straight lines in your shot, you can do this kind of your lens solve, so to speak. I could start adding more lines too to make the solve maybe a bit more accurate, but with these four lines, uh, it works nicely here. So if you go back to our track tab and to take, look, to take a look at our corner pit surface, now if we look closely, let's zoom in here a bit, you can see it perfectly follows our edge now. So this means our straight corner pin surface is now actually curved to follow our lens. And also if we take a look at this grid that is representing our track, it also is uh, curved, yeah, following our lens distortion. Now we can start tracking this. And you can see how nicely this follows our track, although again there are not really many uh, features to, uh, to follow here. I don't want to uh, for you waiting until this track is finished, so let's just uh, use this part of our track and export our tracking data. You choose new corner pin and copy it to the clipboard, and now in new here, uh, I can create a, a corner pin with lens distortion mode and paste the data to it from clipboard. Okay. Now this corner pin with lens distortion has three inputs. It has this source that we want to corner pin, and it has this background, this background. And if we take a look at it, normally it doesn't uh, render the background. It only renders the background when you click this merge option. Also, if you don't want to render the background because you want to merge it in later somehow yourself, make sure to provide the background here because the background is important to, uh, to correctly interpret the distortion map, which is like the lens distortion, that we need to add as a third per, uh, input here. So what is this distortion map? How do you get it? It's really easy. In Mocha Pro, you go to the lens module and say export lens data. And then you just say distortion map clip. Technically, this is an ST map that you get here. Say I want to distort and get your TIFF image. I have this TIFF image already loaded here in you. Uh, this new project. So here it is. So we can just take this image and it, enter it as a distortion map. You can see here, so far we haven't applied the distortion yet, so we have our issue. And now let's uh, apply it. And you can see the lines become straight, but it looks like the corners are not accurate anymore. And this is a little thing that you have to be aware of, that when you export your corner pin data from uh, Mocha Pro and you work with lenses, Make always sure when you check to say export tracking data and check this box. Remove lens distortion. This is exactly compensating for this difference. Then you copy this to the clipboard, uh, go back to this new instance and say from clipboard to update your data. And now you can see you have a nice uh, corner pin that uh, has also this lens data nicely included in this single mode here, the Mocha Import Plus corner pin with lens distortion. Okay, that's the end of my demo. I hope you enjoyed it and got a good idea of what you can do with Mocha and Mocha Import, both in After Effects and New. Obviously, I was not really able to highlight every single workflow, but you can imagine that it's really a powerful, flexible system with a lot of potential. Okay, thanks for your attention and see you again in the next tutorial.